everybody and welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to look into surface grinder setups explained. So if this is familiar hopefully you've looked at my last video I put up making my toolmaker's vice in which there was quite a lot of surface grinding that went on commented by me in terms of the whys and the whats and the hows. So in this video we're going to break that down and I'm going to do a bit more explanation. The reason I put that last video out the way I did, I was playing around with a different format. It's obviously very popular but it missed a lot of detail for other people who want to learn from this kind of stuff and I'm very keen to pass on my experience so that's what we're going to do in this video. So we're going to look at what we did on that toolmaker's vice on the surface grinder. We're going to break it down step by step, setup by setup. We're going to discuss the reasons and the whys and wherefores of each setup. Um, I mentioned in the video about my apprenticeship and me going back to the basics. So it's 30 years since I've done anything properly like this on a surface grinder. I've played around with mine since I bought it but not really anything this accurate. So I was having to remember what I was taught in my apprenticeship which was as a tool maker and surface grinding like this was just part of day to day uh, day to day work without you know any doubt you're on a surface grinder pretty much every day of the week at some point or other so I'm going to be going through some of that um, a little bit on safety I've called it safety light I'm not going to bore you all to death with safety but just one or two key points around the setups I used why I use them with a with a mindset of safety in mind you know grinding is a very dangerous thing surface grinding especially and you don't want to end up with bits of wheel in the side of your head which uh, can very easily happen if you don't do things properly um, and then I want to address some of the comments that I got in the video as well so because I'd not put commentary in lots of people saying would have happily watched this vice build over four or five episodes with more sort of explanation so that's what we're doing in this video and also some of the other comments that I got as well we're going to try and address that specifically in relation to the surface grinder in this video so without any more waffling we'll go back to some of the footage from last week and we'll dig in and hopefully give you some kind of explanation okay here we are looking at the first setup on the surface grinder nothing really notable about this other than I'm grinding the two posts at the top of the vise as you can see here because I surfaced the bottom face to take the bow out and I know there's going to be bow on these two faces so we're doing these first and you'll also see that the part is parallel to the grinding axis and the magnet and that's because it's spanning a good amount of the poles on the table surface and I'm only grinding a small area so heat build up is not a problem on this particular setup so that's it for this setup and I think you can see this is a finished pass. I think I was taking two or three tenths of a thou as a, as a final finished pass over these two faces of this setup. Okay, this is the second setup, and this is where we differ on surface grinding to, say, on a milling machine or a shaper or even a center lathe when squaring stock up. So you should never really put any stock on a surface grinder that's not previously been squared up. There's no danger of doing it, it's just that taking 30 thou or three quarters of a millimeter of outer squareness or parallelism off on a surface grinder is a very tedious job so you need to be putting stock on that's already squared up and reasonably parallel but you can see here we're grinding the bottom surface of the vise and you can see I've got this canted over at probably 30 degrees to the grinding axis a couple of reasons for that one is to get the maximum contact area across the magnet poles with the two posts facing downwards and the second one is because it's a big large flat surface and this grinder is not set up for coolant having it at an angle like this reduces the contact time with the wheel into the part which helps keep the temperature down which helps the whole grinding process not get too out of control with temperature you can also see here I've got two parallels sort of holding the part in place onto the magnet bed because my contact area of the part and the magnet is quite small so this is a safety feature and I'm driving the part into a corner of the two parallels which is nice and sturdy nice way of doing it another tip here you can see the parallels are just 
hanging over the edge of the magnet and that's in really important when you're removing the parallels after grinding that you can just lift them off you can get your fingers underneath and lift them rather than having to slide them off which then just scratches because of the grinding dust all over them and over the magnet scratches your magnet surface and will scratch all your parallels up so handy tip to have your parallels hanging over the edge of the magnet every time you use them and you can see here we're just grinding this bottom surface up and getting it nice and parallel to the first to the first surface we've done okay so this is our third setup and what you can see we've got going on here is at the back of the part we've got a, a one two three block which is a known square device and I've checked that on my surface plate against my granite square so if you want to see that go back in my back catalogue and look at one of my tips videos about measuring squareness you'll see me actually measuring these one two three blocks so I know that they're really square we've got the part clamped to the one two three block you can see we've got a parallel to bring the height of the side of the vise above the height of the one two three block and we've then got sat on that parallel two dowel pins and the reason for that is any any material that you use that has got a carbon content to it will transfer magnetism to the component so if I just sat the part here on top of a parallel there is every chance that I would probably influence the squareness my final squareness because there's a chance it would influence itself down to the parallel as opposed to back to the one two three block even though I'm clamping it so just a safety mechanism to make sure that you know the two dowel pins there stop any chance of that happening and you can also see I've got a couple of packing pieces at the back and the front of the clamp to avoid marking the part up in any way so this is me just grinding the first side and then once I've done that we'll flip this over and I've not shown this in the video but we'll grind the opposite side just by sitting that first side down on the magnet at which point we'll have both sides and the top of the bottom all parallel and square to each other okay this is our next setup you can see here we've got a big V block on the table so lots of support for the part here and we've got the part clamped to the V-block using a carver clamp. Again, if you've not seen that, I've done a video on me refurbishing this clamp and cleaning up the clamping faces so that it can be used on finished machine parts without making any uh, marks or anything into the finished machine part. Very, very handy clamps. And this is what I, in my apprenticeship, was using on surface grinders. So that's why I really wanted one of these so much because I know how useful they are. Now a tip on safety here, if you're going to use a big clamp like this to clamp a part up to something square you need to make sure that whatever you're clamping it to, in this case this big V-block, has got much more magnetism force going into it than the cantilever action of the clamp hanging out the far end because the last thing you want is to start grinding and this thing to tip up into the wheel. So really important if you're using big clamps like this to make sure that whatever you're clamping to is very very sturdily attached to the magnet surface and what you can see at the bottom of this part is one dowel and really same kind of principle that's to stop the part magnetizing itself to the magnet so I've got line contact under the bottom face and that's just to aid clocking so when we set this part up we put a DTI down the side face of the vise that I've already ground until we clock zero and it's just very easy to knock that around until you get it to read zero because you've got it sat on a dowel pin at the bottom meaning the magnet is not influencing the part in any way really and it just makes it really easy to clock and set up so and this is me just grinding the back surface didn't really need to clock this and make it square because you'd never sit it on this surface this is the this is the surface where the screw the actual vice screw sticks out so you'd never actually be sitting the vice on this surface but you know good practice was to grind this surface first and then I can tip it over for the next operation sit it on that surface and grind the other end knowing full well that I've then got everything parallel and square in on the final two faces on the ends of the vise so this is a bigger cut this isn't a finished pass this is me probably taking a couple of thou off this surface at this point 
Okay, so this is our next setup, nice and simple. These are the two hardened jaws, so these have been hardened and tempered at this point, and I didn't show that in the video, but I've shown it in previous videos where I've been hardening and just flame hardening and tempering O1 or gauge plate. So straight down to the magnet, nothing special about this, uh, and not bothering to square anything up. All I wanted was the back face and the clamping face parallel to each other as the sides and the top face are all going to get ground in situ once the vice has been built up with these hard jaws on it. So all I'm looking for here is parallelism of the jaws and when I'm machining the when I'm finally grinding the rest of the vice body I don't need to work the squareness will be going into the vice body not into these jaws so these jaws will just clamp to whatever surface I've ground on the vice body so these just need to be nice and parallel so dead simple grinding here across both the jaws you can see I've got a parallel sitting in front of the in front of the jaws there and I've not followed my own good advice and I've not got the parallel actually hanging off the edge of the magnet in this instance so lots of cleaning up to do before we try to remove that magnet so here's the next setup you can see here we've got our moving jaw in the on the grinder and pretty similar to the other setup you saw when we were squaring up the vice body itself we've got it clamped with a toolmaker's clamp this time to the same one two three block that we know is square and we've got it set on a parallel this time I'm just after parallelism of these first two faces um, but square to the top face which is touching the one two three block so that's why we've got it in this configuration and basically used a similar setup for this all the way around the part sitting on the parallel clamping back to the known square face of the 123 block until we'd ground this up fully uh, on the on the sides and the top and then this is probably taking again this is a probably a, a roughing cut we're probably taking a thou, thou and a half off here at this point and you'll see we've got the hard jaw in place so we're grinding the whole thing up as an assembly so in this bit of film here you can see me dressing the side of the wheel with the with the diamond you can see how I explained this in the video but you can see how I've got the diamond set so if it should dig it's gonna it's moving away from the wheel not digging into the wheel not pulling itself in so we've got this set in a grinding big grinding vice and we're dressing the side of the wheel and leaving a lip right near the edge of the wheel I explained this in the original video and that's to side grind the location face for the hard jaws that you've just seen me grinding to uh, to locate on and I didn't show this in the video and this is just to address some comments that I got there was a good reason for that I've not ground using the side of the wheel like this for over 30 years grinding with the side of the wheel you know any any surface grinding is dangerous you need to have your wits about you all the time you can lose your fingers fairly quickly, you can have wheel bursts and get yourself into a lot of trouble if you're not paying attention. Uh, I've not done this particular sort of side grinding for a long time and I wanted the area around the grinder clear so that I could use the whole space in case anything went wrong and I didn't want the distraction of trying to be filming as I was grinding using the side of the wheel and also I didn't want to be promoting using the side of the wheel to grind anything to people who are probably less um, experienced because grinding you should never really grind using the side of a wheel it's a, it's a bit of a dodge you can get away with it if you're being very careful and you're paying lots of attention it's not something I would recommend anybody doing you should never really put any side pressure on a grinding wheel and these grinding wheels on my surface grinder are only 12 millimeters thick before they've been dressed so very thin very weak and high risk of a wheel burst and this is a brand new wheel so if this burst there would be uh, quite a mess in the workshop at that point and I wanted to make sure I was in a safe position should that happen and as I said didn't want to promote side wheel grinding so that's they're the main reasons I didn't film that last operation it went okay I had to redress the wheel a couple of times throughout the procedure but we managed to get that that surface ground okay for the hard jaw to go up to all nice and square to the rest of the vice and uh, that was that operation that was really the final operation so that's it for the grinding setup so I'll just bring you back to the board and we'll close this short video out
Okay, that gets us to the end of this video. It's quite a short one and I thought it was worthwhile doing based on a lot of the comments that I got and normal service will be resumed in future projects. I'll go back to if I'm doing a, a complex build like this, I'll split it out over two or three videos and put my usual commentary in because as I've said in many of my videos, I, the only reason I do this is to try and pass on knowledge and experience that I've been fortunate enough to gain over the years that I've been in industry and through my sort of background so yeah just showing something getting made whilst it's good for lots of viewers who come along and you, know, you see that in the numbers of this video it's been very popular but it doesn't really help people who want to do similar things in their own workshop so we'll go back to that in terms of some of the comments I've addressed a couple of them as we've gone through some of the grinding setups there you know the key rules of this are with surface grinding I'm going to say it one last time you need to have your wits about you um, I nearly lost a finger in my apprenticeship through just being well young and inexperienced and not having hurt myself too many times on machine tools managed to get a nasty I was taking a part off the magnet or at least I thought I was and in those days, I, this is how I was taught, and which goes against all health and safety rules of today's standards, you never switched your wheel off. Once you've dressed your wheel in, you didn't switch the wheel off because the inertia of turning the wheel off and turning it on again could throw it out of balance, meaning you then need to redress it. So I was taught that you just leave the wheel running, you move the magnet as far away from the wheel as possible, take your part off, and that's exactly what I did. The part was covered in coolant. I forgot to turn the magnet off, grabbed hold of the part to pull it off. My fingers slipped off the part because it was covered in coolant. My hand shot down to the other end of the grinder and I got the grinding wheel straight across my knuckle here and it went straight into, into the bone. So that was a valuable lesson learned. I don't do that here. I switch the wheel off each time. <laughs> you only get bitten by that once. <laughs> Uh, I got lucky so yeah just the safety thing you need to have your wits about you with any grinding any you know an angle grinder an offhand grinder a surface grinder it's no different you can lose bits of your body incredibly quickly if you're not paying attention so that goes back to the last comment that I said about the side wheel grinding so I think the other comments I've had I've had a few comments saying your wheel turns the opposite direction I've never seen a surface grinder do that I was the same. I learned on Jones and Shipman surface grinders, their wheels all run clockwise as you stand at the front and look at the machine. This this grinder of mine that's now covered up behind me runs counterclockwise, which is very strange to me, but I've got used to it. Um, I guess it's just it's a really old manual surface grinder, and that was just Eagle's way of doing it. And I've kind of got used to it so that's one comment I don't know what else to say other than the wheel goes the other way around but you kind of get used to it and other comments I've had around am I going to add coolant to the grinder yes it's absolutely my intention to put some coolant on it's very difficult grinding without coolant because as soon as you start grinding you put heat in to the wheel and into the part if you're grinding a big surface that happens very quickly the part expands gets bigger the grinding wheel starts to dig in deeper as a result of that meaning it's very hard to get a nice flat surface and it's very hard to control the grinding process so absolutely would love to get coolant on there unfortunately I can't just strap coolant on there is no guarding at the end of the machine there's no guarding around the machine so if I just put coolant on in its current state it would just make a right mess all over the machine itself and all over the other machines that are downwind of it so quite a bit of work to do before I put coolant on I could just throw something roughly together out of cardboard and things like that but it's got a limited life it needs doing properly with some you know bent up sheet steel and things like that so future project for the workshop so I hope you've enjoyed that I hope that's given a bit more detail to the toolmakers vice build that I did um, my last video that I put up again if you've not seen that it's probably worth going back and watching that video before you watch this one uh, put things into context a bit more and for those that have watched that one as I said I hope this has given you a bit more uh, in-depth into the setups and the process on the on the surface grinding which is the 
real key bit of a toolmaker's vice, making sure everything's nice and square, nice and parallel, so that you can use it on any side, on the base, on the end. You can tip it any way you like and know that you're going to be clamping square and parallel to everything else on the vice. So, as I said, hope you enjoyed that. hope that shed a bit more light. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along. And we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.